Hey everyone, Caroline Roberts here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys my Israel travel vlog and some of the greatest highlights from my recent trip to Israel. This trip was truly life-changing, truly impactful, so much so that I want to go back. My husband and I are praying about whether or not we should bring a group with us because we believe that this is something that everyone should experience, especially as believers, especially as Christians. This is such a life-changing experience. And, you know, Israel has been one of the bucket list places that we've wanted to go um, for a while. And I didn't even realize that, I believe it was in 2020, that the Lord gave me um, a dream that my husband and I were in the Jordan River together. And, you know, on my recent trip to Israel, I was sharing about it on social media. And one of my friends, she messaged me and she's like, your dream came true. Um, and I'm like, what dream? Because I completely forgot about the dream. And in 2020, she was hosting a marriage retreat in Israel. And I had messaged her and I was like, oh my goodness, it's crazy that you're posting about this marriage retreat in Israel because last night I had a dream that my husband and I were in the Jordan River. So I had messaged her that in 2020. And when she saw I went on the trip to Israel recently, she sent me the screenshot of it. And she's like, you were talking about this. God gave you a dream about this. And I was like, how did I forget that dream? Like, that is crazy. And lo and behold, on our recent trip, we got to experience the Jordan River. While we were at the Jordan River, um, I saw a dove. And I think I caught a little bit of it on camera. And I was like, oh my gosh, babe, there's a dove. And it flew across the camera. I'm going to put a clip of it right here. But I saw a dove and a dove represents the presence of the Holy Spirit. A dove represents peace. And if you're familiar with the story in the Bible, with Jesus getting baptized in the Jordan River by John the Baptist, it said that the Holy Spirit, you know, heaven opened up and the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus like a dove. And God said, this is my son who I am well pleased. So the fact that I went to Israel after having a dream about it three years ago, forgetting that I even had a dream about it. I'm at the Jordan River with my husband, which is what I had explained in the dream. And then I see a dove. And that was the first dove I saw that day. And within the whole day, I ended up seeing three doves that day. Three is the number of completion. I was like, God, like, I feel your presence here. I feel your peace here. You were just doing something amazing in this. And it was just such a beautiful, beautiful experience. Um, So I definitely want to go back, but I just wanted to share some highlights of our trip. That was probably the greatest highlight for me. Getting baptized in the Jordan River by my husband. It was super special. So I just wanted to share that moment with you guys. Like it was just so special to me. Um, And I can really feel the presence of the Lord there. The presence of the Lord is truly there. What else? We went to the Dead Sea and this is the lowest place on earth. And my husband said something really interesting that um, ministered to me because not only is it the lowest place on earth, but this Dead Sea is so, so, so salty, right? Um, so just being in that place ministered to him and I in different ways. And we were kind of talking about it. Um, how it ministered to him is that the Dead Sea is the lowest place on earth. And God sent Jesus to be born in like the lowest condition. He was born in a manger among like animals and stuff in a barn. Look how humble of a of a God that we served. So Jesus was born in a manger, but he was also sent to the city that has the lowest place on earth. The son of God came in the humblest position to the humblest place that he could come. And that just shows just how much of a servant leader our Lord Jesus is, how he was willing to lay down his life for us. So just being there at the lowest place on earth and recognizing that this is where my Savior was sent when he came to earth, that just humbled me so much. And um, it is also the Dead Sea is not only is it the lowest place on earth, it is so, so salty. I've never been to a 
see that salty it's so salty that the salt the weight of the salt is so heavy that when you get in there it causes you to float and come up like even people who don't know how to swim they were just floating like it's so funny people were just laughing they would get in there and they'll be floating i was like trying to stand up and i was just floating i just kept thinking of that scripture you know the scriptures about us being the salt of the earth um and us not losing our flavor and you know us being the salt of the earth for Christ. It was just so amazing. Like, it's like seeing the Bible play out before your eyes. It's like being there, being in the midst of that experience ministered to me in so many ways. Like, it was so good. So um, those are the ways that the Dead Sea ministered to us. And we went on a cruise. Um, we flew into Israel. And we went to Haifa port, the port of Haifa is their cruise port. We went on a seven day cruise across the Mediterranean and we saw Greece and all these different amazing places. And that ministered to me as well because we went to different places where the apostle Paul was and where he preached the gospel. We went to Crete, we went to Cyprus, we went to so many different places. Um, Athens, I believe is where they have the church of the Corinth and all these different places where it's like, this is where the apostle Paul went. This is the region where the gospel began. This is the region where the churches began. And it was so amazing that not only did we get to go to Israel, but we went on this Mediterranean cruise. And I got to think of the places in the Bible where, you know, Paul is getting shipwrecked and he's ministering and he's in prison and he's going to all these different islands and these different places and he's spreading the gospel. So that is another way that the Bible came to life before my very eyes. But after our seven day cruise was over, we went back to Israel and in the middle of the night, God woke me up. And on the cruise, there's this channel. They have TVs where you can keep track of like, you can look at the ocean and see where um, the boat is going. So I turned on the TV, it was probably like four or five in the morning. And, um, you know, it's pitch dark, you know, you just see the ocean, but I see a city far off in the distance and I see we're headed to Israel and the city was so bright full of lights and I was just thinking of the scripture that says a city on a hill cannot be hidden let your light so shine before men um so that they may glorify your father in heaven like I have never seen a city so bright I don't I don't know what God was trying to show me but I was just laying in the cruise um laying on my bed in the cruise you know, pitch dark. My husband was sleeping next to me. The room was dark. I had the TV on and there was darkness all around, like with the ocean and the night sky. But I could see off in the dis distance, we were headed toward the city and it was incredibly bright and just shining and glowing. And I was like, I was just watching it and just looking how bright it was in the midst of all the darkness. And I was like, oh my gosh, Lord, you are ministering to me so greatly right now, just going through that experience. And we only got to be in Israel for like two days to explore, but we got to do so much. But just going through that experience ministered to me in so many different ways. And that's why we want to go back so bad. By the way, I am going to put all of my links below to um, the flight we took, our flight. That was another good experience I'm going to talk about. The airline we took, the hotel we stayed at, um, just everything, my luggage, everything. I'll link it below for you guys. The car rental company, I'll link it below. So we rented a car and while we were driving around, on the first day that we were there, we passed the site of the Good Samaritan. And we stopped at the site of the Good Samaritan, but what stood out to me was for the very first time, I saw a shepherd with his sheep. And the way he was just tending to, to the sheep and there were some sheep dogs there helping the shepherd as well. And the sheep dogs ran up to our car and they were barking at us in protection of the sheep. And I was just thinking of the scriptures and the verses that say, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. And I was just watching this, this shepherd tend to his sheep. And it was like the Bible coming alive before my very eyes. I've never seen all those sheep. I've never seen a shepherd tending to his sheep. 
Um, so that was very beautiful. That really ministered to me as well. Um, and we were there and I don't think it's by mistake. I believe that God does everything for a reason and we didn't plan this out, but we were there during Shabbat and Shabbat is their Sabbath. And we had no idea when we booked our flights that we would be there during Shabbat, but, um, we didn't even really know about Shabbat, but we learned all about it being there. Um, but we were there during Shabbat, which is their Sabbath, Friday through Sunday. And um, the feeling, the aura that you feel when you are in a city where they are intentionally setting aside a time to rest, setting aside a time to glorify God, setting aside a time to spend with their family, setting aside a time to step away from work. And the fact that we were there on vacation and we got to just feel that sense of peace. And I believe that that is why they are so blessed and successful because they are intentional about setting aside this time for God. And it just ministered to me like that I need to have a Sabbath in my own life, which I do, but it just showed me how serious it is and how intentional as believers, especially in the US, that we need to be about that. And God will bless you. Like even Chick-fil-A, they don't sell chicken. They're not open on Sundays. They take their Sabbath, but they are one of the most successful fast food restaurants on the earth in the U.S. And um, you could just feel that. You could feel a peace. And we got to partake in that. And um, seeing the people there, it was just so nice. Just walking on the street, having joy, you know, um, parents pushing their kids in strollers exploring the old city just walking just relaxing like it wasn't like this hustle and bustle like they everyone everything shut down restaurants shut down no driving like they rested and that just ministered to me so so much um the flight there was 12 hours and um, I'm pregnant, so I was up walking on the flight, you know, making sure to stretch my legs. Thankfully, I got a seat right next to the bathroom because, you know, my bladder is tight because I'm pregnant. But I love the airline um, that we used. Um, the airline that we used, they gave a pillow, they gave a blanket, they gave a toothbrush, they gave headphones, they had movies um showing they had games so me and my husband were watching movies we were playing games um it was just really comfortable and it made for a very good experience so i'll link the airline below as well the hotel we stayed at i loved it i felt like it was very modern very upscale um the customer service was amazing and i felt like it was right snap dab where it needed to be it was central to everything it was in walking distance to a lot of places, which was important because people don't drive in the city on Shabbat. So we walked to different restaurants that were open. Um, we walked to the old city. Like it was really a great location. Um, it has Wi Fi, it has a big buffet breakfast. The breakfast was so good. Um, they had so many different options, so many different cheeses, so many different sauces, so many different things. I hope that you enjoyed this vlog, um, just this walkthrough vlog of what we experienced, how it was life changing for us, why we want to go back. And then I'll be doing follow up videos of what you shouldn't do or what you should maybe be aware of before you take a trip to Israel. And I hope those will be helpful to you. But if you enjoyed this video, leave it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time on my channel, do not forget to subscribe. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in my next YouTube video. Until next time. Bye. Thank you.